everybody. Welcome to Tea Time. I'm so excited you're joining me tonight. It is November 2nd. Yes, we're in November, the day before the elections. It's a it's a it's an exciting evening. I feel the electricity is in the air. So I'm going to talk about my weekend real quick, and then I'm going to get to my guest. Friday night, you know, it was kind of like a like a interesting weekend. I didn't like really plan anything, which in a way is kind of fun because you never know what's going to end up happening. Friday night, I just stayed in, made some cop- popcorn, and I watched some horror flicks. You know, got into the mood, Halloween mood, and then Saturday was Halloween and um, my daughter's birthday. Um, yeah. And she went to a party and I didn't see it till Sunday, but that's okay. My girlfriend Raquel came over last minute. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, nothing. So she came over. We did some shopping. We had dinner. It was nice. And then I just ended up, you know, staying home, chilling, watching SNL. And then Sunday, yesterday, I had the familia here yesterday. We had pizza. I made penne alla vodka and a salad. And we celebrated my daughter's birthday. And we celebrated my sister's birthday. And my sister's birthday's on the 27th. And it was lovely. And I'm going to wish a happy birthday to my guest, Jen K, because her birthday was October 30th. Jen is a comedian, a producer. I've known her a very, very long time. Hello, Jen, my friend. How are you? Hi. Hello. Thank you for the birthday wishes. <laughs> yeah. So um, many October babies. Yeah. You know, Scorpio, watch out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah. So listen, so for those of you who don't know Jen, Jen is a comedian and she's a producer, but obviously she, you know, she didn't start off that way. We all start off somewhere different, but Jen is a Queens girl. You grew up where? Uh, Flushing. Flushing. Flushing, New York. Yeah. That's where we met. And you went to what school? What school did you go to? Uh, high school, Francis Lewis. You did? You went to Lewis. Okay. Yeah, oh, Franny Lou. Franny Lou. <laughs> Yeah. And we met actually, oh my God, my daughter was like, I don't know. Val's t- Val turned 23, which is wow. mind blowing. And God, I think, I think I met you when she was like nine or 10. Right? She was little. Yes. She was on a bowling league, a jib lane. And you at the time were working there. And I mean, it, she was so little that I think she used the ramp, you know, to put the, put the ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they uh the little um pee wee leagues uh, that that they had Friday afternoons. I was coaching. Yeah, yeah. It and was I remember so you know, like talking about acting. Yeah, I remember yeah. that. I was I was always into the acting thing, and I did comedy in the nineties. But then all of a sudden, years go by. I we lose touch because I moved to to the island, and I'm at Governor's. And all of a sudden, here you come walking by the green room, you know, for the little room. And I'm like, I know you, I know you. And, you know, because I had brain surgery, I can't remember shit. So I'm like, where do I know you? Where do I know you? Where do I-? And then we were like, blushing, yeah. jibbling, my daughter. And I was like, oh my God, Jen K, how freaking <laughs> is this? It was yes. insane. Yeah, uh, we just we troubleshoot it. We're like, all right, Bayside, Bell Boulevard. Were you drinking? When I drink, you know, and we just. I mean, you're talking um, about we haven't seen each other in like you know 12, 13, 14, whatever oh. years. But oh, I want to I want to back up a little bit because um you actually worked and I actually worked for Local Three, the Electrical Union. Yeah. I was in the ADM division and I worked on all different job sites as the secretary, which was great because it was like me and 110 men. And it was like wonderful. <laughs> it spoiled me rotten. But you actually worked um, for Local 3 also, and you worked for Local 3 from 2008 to 2013, but you were in one specific location, correct? Uh, the DBM division. The DBM division. The and you worked build the maintenance. On, I remember you telling me this. I'm like, how cool. You worked on the Rockefeller <laughs> tray. Yeah, I did six Christmas trees. Yeah. How crazy is that? You know, it, it, yeah. I mean, the first year was like, well, this is so cool. And then um, I didn't realize how you get onto a 90-foot tree, though, because it's, it's the staircases. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, maybe it's not so cool. <laughs> you know, I was like, there's no escalator. And But then, you know, you get used to it. But it really, you know, it really was quite 
and experience, and it was it was a lot of fun. I mean, because so many interesting part things. Of part of history. I mean, it's kind of yeah. like you know, who could say that they you know they, they relamping. Tell everyone what relamping is. Well, relamping or change bulbs, um, but there we had to do the streamers and actually just put the LEDs onto the streamers and then tie them onto the branches. And we did some relamping around, you know, the channel garden and yeah, some yeah. funny stories. I mean, I fell in the tree once. I stepped into the channel garden, like, in the water. Like, <laughs> it's just, you know, a lot of, a lot of things have happened, but it is, like, quite an experience. So... Um, you left Local 3 in 2013, and then what did you do? I, 2013, I got zapped, so that wasn't fun. And, oh, um, I got zapped. I got zapped. Oh, <laughs> and yeah. I really, I thought that was it. <laughs> it's, it's not fun. And, I mean, the guys are laughing at you because they know, like, hey, you know. Meanwhile, I'm, like, feeling my pulse. Um, I went to, I got a job at the Manhattan District Attorney's Office. Which, you know, right now I'm, I'm still there. Um, and I wasn't going to keep it because, you know, with Local 3. Yeah. But that's the same time I started doing stand-up. So I figured it would, the, it just, it was meant to be also in the flex. You know, if you go to work tired while you're doing, like, custodial work, what are you going to do? Like, trip over a vacuum? If you're going to work tired doing electrical, you know, it's a lot more dangerous. So I just yeah, kept absolutely. it and I stayed there. So what made you decide to get into stand-up? <laughs> you know, growing up, always joking around, come from a very funny family, talented. And, you know, it just got me, you know, I just loved comedy. Watch all the old sitcoms and my grandmother. And, you know, who doesn't like to laugh? So I started writing and I met, you know, I wanted to write a sitcom pilot. Ended up meeting the producer. I think you, friends are on my Facebook too, Todd Grodnick. Yeah. And, you know, I've been working with him for a long time. And finally, to the end of 2013, he said, your birthday Christmas gift, I signed you up for stand-up lessons and improv. Awesome. So you're doing this. That's it. <laughs> so it was- jump in, jump in, jump in. And yes. when you do, I did mine actually... Friends, two friends of mine signed me up for comedy without my knowledge for my birthday. <laughs> and it was at the Learning Annex in Manhattan. And at the end of the three weeks, you had to perform at Stand Up New York. So where was your experience? Uh, um, it was through this woman, Samantha Jones, uh-huh. who um, years ago, before I met Todd, I, I found her online and did some improv in Times Square. Mm-hmm. And... Actually, the last day of her her class, you perform in front of like your family and friends, and then he, you know, he signed me up with her again, and they just, you know, just pushed me to do open mics, and then doing open mics just led to having my first show. And so, where was that? Where was that? that, My very first show was at Broadway Comedy Club. Broadway Comedy Club. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was at Stand Up New York, but years ago, back in the 90s, we had Jimmy's Comedy Alley, which was in Bayside. Oh. And I was there a lot. That was a bowling alley that they took <laughs> comedy club. <laughs> and escape the bowling alleys. <laughs> that was, you know, I lived in Bayside at the time, and in the early 90s, I was, I was at Jimmy's a lot. And then I would go into the city a lot. I would do, I did, I got to do Caroline's, which was great. I did comic strips, Stand Up New York. I never did Danger Fields up until this past March that I was so blessed wow. to do Danger Fields before they closed. Yes, you know, what a shame. It's crazy. It's cr- listen, it's crazy what's what's going on here. But no, I didn't. Your first, show, really your first show, how many years ago was that now? Uh, six. Wow, six years. Yeah. Ago. In the October. game, six years. <laughs> <laughs> that go, right? Yeah, it's, I mean, I can't believe it, you know? It's, yeah. I mean, sometimes it feels longer, sometimes it feels like it just started. Right, right. Just a weird time. I, it's crazy. It's a crazy time for everybody. Everyone had so many shows scheduled and lined up, I'm sure, like yourself. Yeah. You know, 
the whole entertainment industry, along with everything else, came to a complete halt. But we were the last phase to return. And I know a lot of comics right now, because there's no comedy clubs open in New York right now. No, not in New York. A lot of comics are going to other states. They're going to Jersey. They're going to PA. You know, they're going to Connecticut. They're going... That's where I was, yeah. Yeah. So, I mean... What do you? What have you been doing since this started? Have you been writing a lot, or have you been, you know, uh, developing a, a pilot, or just, you know, get your all your, you know, creative juices flowing? Because it's, it's yeah, crazy. there's two two pilots that I'm you know, working on, and um, I did, uh, you know, I did a lot of, I submitted to a lot of things before COVID, because I was like, this is yeah, I'm not going to be lazy. I'm just doing all this and. <laughs> all of a sudden it's like last comics standing at um comics roadhouse in connecticut i got into that yeah. and that was live and i was a little hesitant you know but um they're very clean and taking precaution at mohegan sun so yeah. i uh, i was like okay and i made it to the semi-finals in that and so it felt good to perform live after months like doing zoom you know, it, it's it's not the same doing stand up on oh, Zoom. I know, I but it's something. My girlfriend's breaking my chops. She's like, uh, you know, I know you don't do Zoom shows. I said it's not that I don't do Zoom shows. I just haven't done one yet. Well, I mean, do it. You know, because you know why? Why not? You know. No, I mean, um, I mean, you do everything else, and you know, you you don't you don't say no. You say yes, and that way you do it. And, you know, I get it. And you know, improv they, rule. You know, yeah, it's all, it's true. It's so true. It's so true. But you know what it is, is that everyone's trying to stay relevant. We're all trying to like just, it's like walking through mud. You know what I mean? It's like walking through mud and we're walking through mud and we're waiting till there's no more mud. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. <laughs> it, right? You just feel like you're trudging along. And it's like, because I tell you the truth, I was like, I was like, all right, 2020 is going to, be my year. And I, and I, I saw a friend of mine who's an amazing, amazing uh, medium. She's just amazing. I've had her on my show and she says to me, Teresa, ain't nothing happening in 2020. It's just not <laughs> happening in 2020. Oh man. Like, you know, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I started in acting. That's where I started. And then I got into the comedy, but I, cause I said, I want to become SAG. I want to get an agent. I want to do this. And she goes, it ain't happening in 2020. I'm telling you right now. And I'm like, damn, man, really? She goes, no. She goes, but 2021 is going to be much better for you. <laughs> I was like, okay, <laughs> I think it's going to be much better for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I, I couldn't wait to get it. 2019. We had three deaths in the family. Aww. And we were just like, and it was all happening in the beginning of the year. So we had the rest of 2019. And I was like, all right, listen, 2020, let's go. That ball dropped. I was like, goodbye, 19. <laughs> and then I think uh, me and Kathy had a show January. I'm yeah. like, all right, we already got a show in January. This is going to be yeah. great. Yeah. And then it's like, stop right there. And I was like, oh, man. It was like, they just hit pause. And that was it. I know. All right, listen, I want to give out some shout outs. Hello, Carol Waska. Hello, Bruno. Hello, Carlo. Thank you for watching the show. Please like it. Please share it. I'm with Jen K. She's a really good friend of mine. She's funny as hell. She's a com comedian and she's a <laughs> So, but listen, what we're going to do is we're going to take a really, really quick commercial break. Uh, don't go away. Stay right there. We're going to be right back with Jen K. <laughs> Tonight. Are you bored? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Hold on tight. We're going to coast this. 
Coasters Tavern is located at 487 New Bridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Well, hi there, Teresa. It's John York from General Hospital. I am just checking in because apparently you have a great talk show called Tea Time on Strong Island TV. I want you to have continued great success and have a lot of fun. It sounds like you're having a lot of fun. And that's pretty much the key to everything, isn't it? So continued success. I'm proud of you. Have a great day, Teresa. Bye. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you're joining me tonight. That's right. It's Monday. It's Monday. And I want to thank John York from General Hospital for those beautiful words. Thank you, John. You know, I had Carolyn Hennessy from General Hospital on. She plays Diane Miller. And I'm waiting for you, John. I can't wait to have you on. And listen, I'm so excited because someone nominated Tea Time. Someone nominated my show, Best of Long Island Podcast. So um, what I really like you to do is now I got to ask for votes, okay? I'm not a politician, but I got to ask for votes. So what I'd like you to do is Google Best of Long Island, Beth Page, 2021. You go to Arts and Entertainment. You click on that. Then you click on podcast and then you click on tea time and you cast your vote for me. And you can do that every day until December 15th. And um, there's a one in 18 chance that I might win. You never know. So um, I appreciate everybody. If you vote for tea time, because listen, if I win, I'm going to throw a big party. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. It's going, it's going down. It's going down. All right. So listen, I want to thank everyone for watching. Please like the show. Please share it. I'm with Jen K. She's a good friend of mine. She's a comedian. She's a producer. Um, grew up in Queens. We're both Queens girls. And um, worked for Local 3 for a while on the Rockefeller Christmas tree. How cool is that? Mm -hmm. And then went into comedy. So, Jen, what I want to know is when you started producing, because I know you produced some shows at Broadway Comedy Club that I was so honored to be part of uh, with my girl Kathy Arnold, because we traveled yeah. together. We're like a <laughs> traveling travel together we do the show together it was so much fun i love the club i had all al martin on my show great guy read his book great book everyone needs to get it so when did you say hey you know what on top of performing i think i want to produce uh actually uh matt bridgestone a comedian with ac jokes do a lot of his shows and he told me he's like start producing and start hosting like last last minute you know in, in ac atlantic city last minute like 10 minutes before the show he's like by the way you're hosting tonight and that was like my first you know i was like what because i didn't did it one time for like sue, sue costello yeah. and she was another one too like oh you're hosting um you could do it and i was like oh okay and then it was after that it's been years and matt's so like yeah you're hosting yeah, so yeah i hosted in atlantic city and he's yeah. like start producing Right. Just start doing it. He helped me. He set me up and then um, started producing. And, you know, this is like, sometimes it's crazy, you know, because then it's a lot of work. Just to set it up. it is. And comics might not, sh I had comics just not show up, that's you like know, and it's like, it, like, I would never do that to somebody. And that's, that's not good. <laughs> and, you know, um, and I started, you just, you figure out who you can work with and who you exactly. can. Exactly. Yeah, because then, I mean, this, yeah, I mean, you know, it happens, like, you know, not even a call, like, it's people who can't make it, and it happens, but, like, this one was just, like, a no show, nothing, no call, and I've never met her, and I was like, yeah, I'll put you on, you know, because she kept asking and asking, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no call, and so I was like, wow, like, this sometimes isn't, isn't easy, and, <laughs> um, and I started producing with um, Cooper Jordan, from New York's Got Talent. And we pretty much, we do a lot together. So we produce. Yeah. And it's just, it became easier after a while. I actually met him at Broadway, right? You introduced, he was there that night that I performed. I think yeah. so. Yeah, because I put you and Kathy on credit nice a few guy. shows. I don't remember who. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It was fun. A lot of fun. Yeah. 
So you got into this America's, you got, you, you auditioned for America's Got Talent first, or did you audition for New York's Got Talent first? Um, America's Got Talent and, you know, it was, I did America's Got Talent first for the first time and, you know, I, and I didn't get called, but I woke up one morning checking my emails and I just see like Got Talent. So I was like, wait, who? And I was like, but it was New York's Got Talent. Right. And I didn't know much about it, you know, cause I always try to just audition for stuff and I, let me just send it in. So I, I didn't think anything and I went to it. And Cooper Jordan, and I said okay. So some comedians I know. Yeah. Then it's it's like AGT. There's judges, and the audience votes. So I advanced, and I was like, oh. Then I was like, wow. So they give you five. Okay. And then I advanced to another round. Okay. Then I was like, oh, this is pretty serious. I was like, I'm gonna invite people. <laughs> Because I didn't, I didn't have anybody in the audience. And this was in Manhattan, correct? Yeah, uh, I was at Electra Theater. They they just like closed it down uh -huh. a couple of years ago, yeah. and so I started inviting people. And you know, um, I became very friendly with the judges too. I actually work with Donna Moore, who's a judge. Uh -huh. We work on a pilot together, and it's it's fun. I listen. I well, when things do go back to normal. I always tell people, just send an audition, go for it. It's a fun show. Cooper, he's great. And it's, it really is. It's a lot of fun. It's the same thing with the, and there's different talent. It's right. not just comedians. Yeah. So if you want to go sing or, you know, <laughs> even, you know right. comedy. Yeah. yeah. People yeah, do so some crazy fun. stuff. I mean, there's people yeah. out there that do some crazy things that you yeah. never think of doing, but they do it. Somebody showed up as Spider-Man and his Atlantic City's got talent. Yeah. Dressed as Spider Man, but he was a singer. Okay. <laughs> so people do crazy things. He just showed up dressed as Spider Man singing an Aladdin song. Singing, wait, so. Spider Man just like singing an Aladdin song? <laughs> yeah, Prince Ali. So people do, sing? you know. Did he sing? Could, yeah, he wasn't bad. He wasn't bad, but, but he, I didn't know what to expect. Like webs coming out, or, you yeah, know. It's like, what's. Why you want to cover your face, dude? Don't you want people to know who's singing? I don't it get. was just so you're right. People they do crazy things, just to, <laughs> you know. But it's it's fun. Yeah, yeah. You know what it is too. It's it's sometimes you have to step outside your comfort zone because you don't know where it's gonna lead you. You don't. Right. And you you know that there's a lot of networking in this industry, and it's it's meeting people, it's introducing yourself, and it's trying to like. You know, knock on doors or kick them in. Yeah. You know, a, you know, one comes first. But <laughs> your comedy cracks me up. You are, you do the one. I mean, you have so many jokes that make me laugh. But the one joke that I, I that I just, not to put you on the spot, but I want you to. <laughs> is, when you talk about going into the bank. When you talk about going oh. into the bank. Oh, when they when the bank teller asked me for photo ID. Yeah, and, and it's like. I, Huh? <laughs> I say, you know, you know, I went to deposit money into my checking account and the bank teller had asked me for photo ID, which I found a little weird because I'm not going to go to somebody else's checking account and try to deposit my money. Right. You know, like imagine getting that phone call. Hi, Jennifer, uh, this is Chase. We just caught somebody depositing money into your checking account. <laughs> Do you want to press charges? It's like, <laughs> no, thanks. I like to buy them in edible arrangements as a thank you. Oh, it's so funny. You know, it's like a Polish bank robbery. <laughs> you know, like, you can't take my money. <laughs> like, so I just don't get it. Money in my account. Oh my god! <laughs> You're like, oh no, there's money there. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. And then oh the ID god, is just so funny. funny. Cracks me up. Just cracks me up. <laughs> the things that you think about. You know, it's it's almost like observational comedy, but it's yeah. you put a twist on it. You know what I mean? Because yeah, like ideas, like I don't even know how ideas expire when it's you know your face, and I don't know. I can see thirty five years from now, like an idea expiring, because you you know you're aging. Right, right. But you know, I used to get like, oh, you you can't come into the bar; it expired yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I got one more wrinkle than yesterday. New picture. Oh it's just you know, but you're right. Observational. You know, that's that's a lot what I do. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I think you know what it is too, because you know, and it's stuff that everyone deals with. You know, everyone's everyone's who hasn't gone into. You know, we all go into banks. I mean, like not recently. I know my banks yeah. don't. I have to do everything through the freaking ATM. I'm a people person. You know that. I like to go in. I like to say, "Hi, Jen. How you doing today? <laughs> Here's my deposit. Okay, would you? What kind of change you want back?" No, I don't like going into this machine and feeding it. I don't like it. I don't like like <laughs> it. I want people. I want to deal with people. A lot of people like I can't stand people. Yeah, I'm I opposite. People. I don't know. I guess. Yeah, I'm... <laughs> you want to go to the ATM? <laughs> yeah, but I don't like when you the ones when you do deposit money and it's like snaps at your hand. <laughs> Those I'm like, whoa, <laughs> like just take the other one. But I'd rather deal with an ATM than people. <laughs> I guess you know what it is. It's like my daughter Valerie makes fun of me because I still write out checks. <laughs> I don't think I ever, well, maybe a, one or two. I don't even know. She's like, Ma, really? And I'm like, I like to write out checks. She makes, <laughs> she, makes, she makes fun of me. Anyway, and then when she deposits, she's like, look, I'm going to take a picture of the front of the check. I'm going to take a picture of the back of the check. That's all you have to do. And I'm like, oh, what the hell? I'll probably screw that up. You know what I mean? I'll probably screw that up myself. <laughs> Because then you can just quick pay. <laughs> exactly. But not Teresa. Here's a, here's a check. <laughs> oh, my God. So, hey, my girlfriend Raquel is watching. Hey, Raquel, I was just telling everybody how we hung out on Saturday shopping and dinner. It was lovely. I like, like, a little impromptu stuff sometimes because, you know, you have a lot, you have a lot of fun that way. So basically, so you auditioned for America's Got Talent, you auditioned for New York, New York's Got Talent, but you placed, you placed in New York's Got Talent, didn't you place? Yes, I was in the semi, like the, the, the final, I was a finalist, yeah. You were a finalist? Yeah. And how many, how many were there? Uh, it was me, a magician, I think a dance group, the dance group one. I was just, you know yeah. what? I don't get jiggy with it. <laughs> jiggy with it? <laughs> No, but I don't regret anything. It was so much fun. I mean, you know, it opened so many doors. That's and that's working that's with awesome. Cooper. Yeah. So you never know. Just Google. I always do was Google. Say, oh, auditions for stand-up. You never know. That's, you know what? That's that's great advice for, for any comics who are watching. Google. Just Google. Yeah. Um, stand-up. Stand-up. So, yeah. yeah. Don't yeah. Google symptoms. Huh? Don't Google symptoms because, oh. like, I have everything. When I, I had fleas, I had, you know, broken arm. Don't just Google, like, stand-up. Like, you just Google stand-up? That's it? I do, like, stand-up auditions. Um, you know, just any, any type of those key words, stand-up comedy auditions, that's, comedy that's, auditions. That's good, that's good for everyone to know. There's so, I look, there's so many comics out there. And, you know, who just graduated from a class and looking for yeah. you know, open mics. And, like, you know, right now it's like, you know, we're all on pause. You know, yeah. Pretty much. Um, but it's good advice. It's good advice for other comics who, you know, are looking to do something, you know. Yeah, because a lot is virtual. A lot is virtual. The Boston right now. Comedy Festival. When we come back, we're gonna we're gonna talk about virtual when we come back. But listen, we're gonna take a quick commercial break. Don't go away. More with Jen King when we come back. <laughs> Why don't we go to Coasters? Oh, cool. I heard it's a great place. Let's check it out. Yeah, definitely. All right. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> Coasters Tavern is located at 487 Newbridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Hey, everybody.
everybody. Welcome back to Tea Time. Thank you for joining me tonight. I'm with my friend Jen Kay. Um, I just want you to know that um, you got to vote, right? Everyone's got to vote. Who do you vote for? You vote for Tea Time. That's right. My show was nominated. Best of Long Island, Beth Page 2021. And you know how you can help me win? Oh, it'll be a huge coup if I do. You Google Best of Long Island, Beth Page 2021. You scroll down, you go to arts and entertainment, you click on it, then you go to podcasts, you click on it, and then you click on Tea Time. That's it. And cast your vote. And you vote for Tea Time. I'm very excited about this. Um, you know, you never know. You never know. So now I got to be like a politician, ask for everyone for votes. So when you get a chance, please do that for me. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm back with Jen K. Jen K is a friend of mine for a really long time. Comedian, producer. Um, you know, she's, she's hysterical. And if you haven't seen Jay, Jen live, which a lot of people aren't doing right now, um, you mentioned that you, you're doing virtual um, and you're doing a lot with flappers, right? Yeah, I've done a few flappers. I was in the Burbank Comedy Festival. The and Burbank Comedy Yeah. Festival. You probably Googled that too, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, that I, first, yeah. I, that's how I found out about it a couple of years ago. And um, they did it virtually this year. Really? Yeah, so and I did some shows comics? with them. Do you know how many comics were on that? Um, audition, I think there was a couple of hundred. Mm. And I don't know how many they took. Cause they did uh, two weeks um, instead of one week. Right. You know, I was a little bummed about because I wanted to go to California. You yeah. know, they had the, the panels and everything. But yeah. it was it was great virtually, too. I think they did a great job. Yeah. And it was fun. So mm -hmm. maybe next year. You never can know. Travel again. <laughs> Listen, I'm going to tell you what I tell my other girlfriend. My bags are always packed in the bottom of my closet in case I need a quick getaway. So I've been to, I've been there. I've been to California. I went I, in the early 90s. I did some shows out there and it was great. I had the best time and it's I haven't been there since the early 90s. So I'm ready to go back. All right, so when this travel ban, well, everything can you will go. Between my accent and your accent, <laughs> forget about it. <laughs> yeah, right. They'll just throw their wallets at us. Yeah, right. Oh, no. we get them mugged. They just said, "How you doing?" <laughs> we, How you doing? Oh no! <laughs> wow. So, all right. So you're doing virtual. You're doing virtual. And how did you how did you hook up? So you got flappers through the Burbank. Yeah, they do the Burbank Comedy Festival. Yeah. And they said, you know, whoever was in it, you could just send your availability and do some shows. So well, as we're you, doing, how many virtual shows have you done since uh, we're all in, you know, this uh, lockdown? I did, did quite a few because my friend Suzanne and I were doing like a weekly one or so, and you know, it's we we stopped that like July when st things started to open up yeah. and the weather got nicer because you know people were like, oh, we could go outside a little bit now. You know, and then we started it up again. We did a show like last week, two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So um, I did quite a, quite a few. I was very hesitant. Like you said, you didn't, you know, you're not sure you want to do one. I was hesitant because it's like, you know, it's just strange, but it's they're fun. Yeah. You, you know, you can, you know? Yeah, when you do them, you can see the audience, but you can't hear them, right? No, we, we asked them to unmute themselves, you know, so we can hear laughs, but if you're gonna go talk on the phone or you know tell your husband to stop doing that, you know just mute yourself. That's the whole thing, you and know. You can hear dogs barking, babies crying, you could hear, you know, you could hear a bunch of stuff. It's nice to get the feedback, yeah. but you never know what you're gonna get when that happens. Yeah, and sometimes it's funny because you just hear people say something because you know, they don't realize that they're like, "Oh, did you hear what she said?" <laughs> and you know, it, but it's it's fun and. I think you should try it next. Next show will we produce one. You gotta, you gotta come on it. Okay. When, when, when's your next show? You doing? Do you know? I gotta. Yeah. Um. Right now, I don't. I don't have. Well, you know, I got. I'm a little busy with things right now. Um. What are you busy you know, with? The, what are you busy the with? Move. <laughs> the move. The moving. Oh, the move. Out west. Let's yeah. talk about the move. So, so, um, the 
you know, I asked you, we don't have a picture of the two of us. And the day that I did governors that you were there because I'm looking and I'm going, all right, there, there's Kathy with Jen and there's, 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 there's um, uh, Jessica with Jen and there's everybody. Yeah. I, was dressed, I was dressed as the old lady that night. Oh, I, yeah, I, you, yeah. I'm Mary, remember? Yeah, so we don't have one with Teresa. With me. <laughs> we, we, I did Grandma Mary that night. Kathy calls me up. I don't know. Maybe a couple of hours before the show, and she's like, "What are you doing tonight?" I'm like, "Nothing." You want to come down and do five minutes? And I was like, "I guess so." <laughs> and I'm like, five minutes was like nothing, but I was like, "All right." But right away, I knew in my head I wasn't going to come as myself. I was going to come as Grandma Mary. I've never done her ever as a set. I've only done her, done her. <laughs> I've only performed as her when I do the feminine douche commercial. Yeah. But I've never done her on stage as, a, you know, you know, I stand up as, as, you know, whatever, not in a bit. And I, that night, and I'm writing, I'm writing stuff on the way there in the car. It was crazy. And I would say half of that performance was all improv, especially when I was talking to the guy in the front row saying, you want me, don't you? <laughs> I'm making you hot. You know, dressed as this old lady and she can get away with so much more stuff than I can. Yeah. I had a blast doing it, but that was the night you were there and I was just as the old lady. Cause I'm like, yeah, well, I don't know why we don't have a picture together. It's yeah. But that's when we took a picture. I think dressed as that. That is when you're dressed as a lady. Fine one. And then yeah, I we, like, I'm surprised you don't. I didn't see one. Unless Kathy. Kathy might have one. I, I don't know. But, but you know, like I said, you know, we were trying to do shows. Governors was trying to do shows. They built this thing called the patio where we they yeah. were outside for a while. And then all of a sudden, they're like, no, 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 no. And I'm kind of like pissed off because... You know, we can walk into a um, germ-infested hot box called the gym, right? But you can't do comedy outside. Not like not like anyone's doing it now because it's starting to get cold. You could go to a bowling alley and stick your fingers in those three <laughs> holes. Can't do comedy. But what I heard was the state of New York is grouping comedy clubs along with karaoke and strip clubs. I, that I don't the strip clubs I don't understand. I, I mean, mean, I ain't giving nobody a lap dance. I'm on stage. I, I'm a joke. I I know. I don't. I mean, it's a microphone at a pole. I don't. That I do. I think Cuomo really like bombed that open mic one day and just hates comedians. <laughs> I just I don't I don't get it, and I feel bad because I I don't feel like I'm suffering as much because I got to perform. Yeah. You know, like like I said, my last show was March seventh. Up until August. Well, my and it felt so good. I think March 9th was the last show I did in a comedy club, which was Dangerfields. But I actually, people are booking me for private gigs. I just did a 50th mm. birthday party. And that, I, that's great. Not for nothing. It was really great. Uh, it was really, <laughs> really good money for freaking 30 minutes. And I'm like, I <laughs> for like people, it. right? People. Huh? Like there's people, so yeah, there's, there was real people. Yeah, it was, it was. There weren't too many because I was, you know, I was, you know, worried about that a little bit. And she goes, no, she goes, it's a big space. It's not gonna be too many people. It's for my brother-in-law. It's his birthday. He's fifty. And I go, well, what can you tell me about him? She goes, well, he's a big couponer. He loves to coupon. So for like two, three weeks before the party, I'm clipping every coupon I could find, and I put it in a big. A uh, nice wide envelope, and and I'm going. Um, yeah, so uh, Vinny, I heard it's your birthday. Happy birthday! Look, I got a nice wide for you. Look what I got for you. And then I, he goes, and I hand it to him. I said, "They're coupons." Oh, you had to see his face. He was like or, or having an <laughs> orgasm. He was like so excited. And and then he was so excited. He was starting to open the envelope to look. I go, "No, no, Ashbet, what are you doing? You gotta wait till you get home. You can't look at them now. You know, you got people." That's funny. I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell some jokes, but. It <laughs> 
it was so much fun. And then someone else recommended me, and uh, I was supposed to do a private gig in Bayside, but the weather didn't cooperate because it was outside. So now she wants me for like you know whenever. I'm like whenever you want me, let me know. But I'm I'm digging the private gigs. I am. I'm hey, listen, it's something, and it's, and it's it's people. I mean, it's like what did there? It's like you know you like I miss stand up, but I didn't realize like. Cause since I started, that's the first time like they, you know you can't perform, and I'm like, what's going on? Yeah. And and I'm gonna just I was like, oh my god, like I missed this, you know. And my mom hasn't seen me, so like my mom and Aida surprised me at the second round because I didn't I don't want them around people, you know. Yeah. And then they walk into the club, and I'm like, what? what? And my mom's like, I have to see you again live. Like it's been so long. <laughs> You know, so I was like, all right, you know. My mom's, my mom's one of my biggest fans, too. I did Ben's Deli in Bay Terrace. And she came with the golden, I call them the golden gold groupies. <laughs> a bunch of people. And then um, some cousins came, whatever. But they were, you know, they were older, older group. And what I did was I started out as Grandma Mary. And then I kind of like said, oh, my granddaughter's not here you know ready yet and then once i would she was done then i came up i'm like oh, how freaking funny is she give it up <laughs> for my grandmother it was fun it was it was just a lot of fun you know it's kind your of your mom like, always like has fun at these shows <laughs> i know my mom my mom's so funny and like i'll, I'll make fun of her and talk about her and i'm like don't get mad ma because you know everything i'm saying is true you know <laughs> no so, she's fun i remember when she comes to shows always laughing she is funny my mother total 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 nut. That's where I get it from. My mom, my father's like, you might look like me, but you're all your mother. I'm like, I know. <laughs> but I remember your mom too years ago. Yeah. And, yeah. You know, Jim. She used to make the cream puffs and deliver them to the joint board. She used to make <laughs> thousands and thousands of cream puffs every Christmas. Because oh my, my God. dad worked there. He was a, a business rep and he'd go around to every department handing out the cream puffs. Oh, wow. It's crazy. That's a lot. That's a lot of green. A lot. I said she should open up her own bakery. So getting back to you. Um, all right. So I get in touch with you and we did a show. Yeah, we did. A, we actually filmed a pilot a couple of years ago um, and we did stand up together. And I haven't I haven't really talked to you. I haven't seen you. I haven't talked to you. I think about you all the time. And then I'm like, let me reach out to you. And then you're like, I'm moving in two weeks. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what? And yeah, like, I'm moving to Vegas, Vegas in two weeks, and I was like, "You ain't leaving your mother." That's the first thing I thought about. I'm like, she's not leaving her mother. That's what everybody says. No, she's she's gonna follow soon. Okay, so obviously you gave notice at work that you're moving, but where well, are you like moving to, and what are you gonna be doing? Because it's funny because at work, um. They're like, are you going to take any holidays off? And I didn't tell them yet. And I'm like, maybe. <laughs> you know, I usually take the day after Thanksgiving, but I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. And I was like, oh, by the way, <laughs> two weeks notice. <laughs> um, I'm going to Las Vegas, the city, you know, itself. And, you know, Las Vegas, Nevada. And um, I'm going to see where comedy takes me. You know, just, why Vegas? Like, have you always wanted to? Like, yeah, you, you've been there before, no? I've been there a lot of times. Yeah, okay. and um, it just a decision that was kind of spur of the moment in June. Yeah. And yeah, and then you know, my aunt's out there. I have friends out there. My aunt, my uncle, and some friends. And you know, I said the first thing I I did was call you know Cooper Jordan from you know New York's Got Talent. Yeah, I said. Is there a comedy out there for us? Like, can we do something? He's like, yeah. Yeah. I, and I was like, yeah, you know. And because I love working with him. Because he's like, you're going to fly back and work with me? I was like, yeah, of course. And so that was like the first thing I said. I said, I have to be able to perform. Yeah. So I did that. I looked up a lot of stuff. Um, Flappers, they said, you know, when they open, you know, start doing some live comedy one day soon, I hope. <laughs> and... <laughs> I just said, all right, let's do it. And now that it's closer, it's kind of like, oh, we're doing this? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're, and, really, you're really moving. You're really moving. Yeah. You're packing and you're, you, I you're packed my jacket. It better not snow. <laughs> I packed my jacket and now it says snow. Then my friend in Vegas is like, well, we're still wearing shorts. I'm like, well, I'm not shaving my legs. <laughs> like, I'm already, <laughs> and my mind's like, it's winter. I'm done. <laughs> you know, so. 
<laughs> well, you know, you know, my joke about that is how I talk about being hairy and Italian, and I say I I'm a winter girl. You know why? Because I'm in a relationship with my razor for three months. <laughs> Well, I looked out the Italian to me. Squashed, but whatever. <laughs> but, shaving is so overrated. Men don't give a crap if you're shaving yeah, up. Listen, once once it's winter, you gotta wait till till the short weather. Yeah, it's like no, you know. Um, and yeah, that's you know, it's I don't know. I don't even know what to say. Anyway, I'm so I'm really excited for you. I really am because I know that there is there's big things waiting for you out there. Thank you. It's 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 fun and, and scary, but it's you know, you have to take I have the chance. I could visit. <laughs> yes, and yeah, then we could go to California. Oh yeah! Oh, I had I had a ball in California. I had a ball. A ball. I took Kathy too. Come out, yeah. like I start producing shows out there. Like oh, yeah, oh you yeah, know? hitting the road. He's I never been there. See, your travel buddy. Now you come out west and. Yeah. Like, hey, we got on the train, now we're getting on the plane. Yeah. <laughs> and just come right there and pick you up at the airport. And, mm -hmm. you know, so, I mean, this, I'm optimistic. One day things are going to go back to normal. Yeah. If back in early 1900s with the flu, I mean, if, <laughs> you know, I mean, we still had the flu, but if with the technology then and the medicine, I'm sure now with today's world, we, we got to right. get something, you know. It'll be a little while, but one day. So, so what are you what are you doing as far as you know work as far as you know like do you have something yeah. with you out there or are you just gonna yeah wait? no my friend hooked me up with with something and oh, good. um and I'm gonna you know just see I spoke to some comedians that I found online uh -huh. and you know very nice everybody's nicer over there <laughs> even the people you speak to on the phone I'm like Oh, they're nice. Oh, nice. <laughs> like, I'm so used to that. Oh my god. Like New Yorkers, like I hate getting on the phone. And these people are like, oh, if you need, even when you email them, if you need anything else, just let me know. I'm like, for real? <laughs> like, <laughs> really? Like I could do that? And they are very nice. So yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll be nicer now out there. No, but it, it, they are, and it's it's gonna. I, I'm excited. For, you know, yeah, I am. I'm excited, I am excited for you. Oh, all good Thank things. You. I'm telling you, all good things is going to come out of this. I'm telling you, God's got a plan. God's got a plan. So whatever you're doing is part of the plan. And on that yes. note, don't go away, everybody. We're going to take one last quick, 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 quick break. More with Jen K. Tonight. Are you bored? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> Hold on tight. We're going to Coasters. Coasters Tavern is located at 487 New Bridge Road in East Meadow. Their number is 516-557-2222. Hey everybody, welcome back to Tea Time. I'm so glad you joined me tonight. I'm having a blast with my friend Jen K. Uh, listen, okay, gonna ask you one more time to vote. Vote for Tea Time. Someone nominated my podcast, my show, Tea Time, for Best of Long Island, Beth Page. I don't know who did it. I wanna thank you. Thank you for nominating me because I'm just so excited that, that I'm nominated. But you know what? I wanna win now. I wanna win, why not? You know, let's give it a shot, but I need your help. I need your help. And if I win, I'm going to throw a party. I really am. So listen, what you have to do is Google Best of Long Island, Beth Page 2021. Go to Arts and Entertainment. Click on that. Get, then go to Podcast. Click on that. And then go to Tea Time and click on that. Click on Tea Time and vote. And you can vote every day up until December 15th. I'm very excited about this. At first, I was like, oh, that's okay. Someone nominated me. And my friend's like, oh, no, it's a big deal. It's a big deal. And I was like, okay. So now I want to win. 
All right. So everybody, cash to vote for tea time. I appreciate that that very much. And hello, everyone who's watching, Raquel and Jackie. Hey, Jackie. All right, so listen, I'm here with Jen K. She's a very good friend of mine. I've known her a long time. We reconnected, and uh, I she produced shows. I did a few of her shows. Um, she's a comedian. She's a producer. And um, Jen, I know you performed at Mohegan Sun. You performed at Hartford, Funny Bones, Comics, Roadhouse. Those were all in Connecticut. I know you like to you know, travel and, 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 you know, look, wherever there's a stage and a microphone, that's where we show up, right? That's right. <laughs> that's all I say. Just give me a stage and a microphone because my, my mother will say to me, she, she doesn't care how many people are in front of her. You know, like they could be thousands and thousands of people and Teresa's just, she's just feels so at home when she's performing and like on stage, you know what I mean? And it's true. I mean, my mother put me on stage when I was four years old. So I'm used to that. Ta tap dancing lessons at Robert Mann Dance Studio in wow. Bayfield. She put me on the stage and that was it. And then in school, I was in shows. And then, like I said, my two friends said, you're going to do stand up. And I'm like, you people out of your mind. I'm an actress. I'm an actor, actress. I don't do, oh, but you're funny. You're funny, you're funny. And I was like, all right, whatever. And then I got into comedy. And I like it. I do like it. I, um, I'm i not the type of person that could just sit down and think about a topic and then try to, like, come up with something. Stuff just pops into my head. And then I have to write it down. What's your writing process like for you? Uh, it, you know, like we mentioned earlier, a lot of observational. Yeah. So if I just, if I see something, I'm like, oh man, that's funny. I got to work that into a joke or something that happens to me. Yeah. You know, um, like my, my train joke with the boobs, you know, um, you know, it's like, it's certain, it's like, how do I got to work that in? Or as you know, it's, there's times where like, I'll do that. If I'm sitting down, um, I have a lot of free time. I'm like, all right, let me, I, I need to, I want to write new material. Right. I'll go back to a lot of old material because comedy, you know, evolves. Yeah. Especially like I, I hate watching my very first show. <laughs> like, yeah, like, <laughs> you know, I went well, but I just don't like to watch it. Right. And, you know, you can see all your mistakes, but I take jokes from that started writing years ago. Yeah. And I just make them better, add to it. So it's just about like re recycle some stuff. And there's times I do sit there and say, all right, listen. There's funny things out there. Let me just then, write some you, new jokes. Who, who do you practice them on? Who do you say, yeah. you know, I'm going to tell you something and then just like, I don't know, hope for a good reaction? Mostly like my mom, my brother, you know. Um, Family. You know, my girlfriend, I always tell her. Yeah. Um, but it's different because, like, if I'm telling you a joke, and sometimes they'll be like, yeah. But then when you're on stage, this comes out differently. Right, right, right. You know? I know. So, you know, or like the mirror, I'm just like, you know, but it does. It just comes out. There. That's why I say, you know, do your open mics. Yes, yes. But you never know how jokes are going to work until there's an audience Absolutely. and you, you just do it. Every audience is different. I want to say hello, Greg, Greg Filippo. He's in Florida. I know it's nice and warm down there. It's cold up here. So listen, Jen, we only have like another minute left. This is how fast, you know, <laughs> You know you could come back anytime you want, but I'm glad. Thank you so much. Because then the freaking time difference, whatever. Okay, so listen, I want people to follow you. Um, you can find Jen on Facebook at Jen K. You could find her at Jen K Comedy, which is on Instagram. Is there anything else they could find? Um, on? My Facebook comedy page, Instagram, and Twitter. And Twitter. Okay, yeah. so what's the Twitter? All, all the same. Jen K A Y Comedy. Jen K Comedy. Okay. NK comedy. All right, so listen, this has been so much fun. I miss the hell out of you. I really do. Same here. I miss you. I love hanging out with you and you know, all good all good things for you. Uh, what what's the, what's the exact date you're like leaving leaving? Next Friday. Holy thirteenth. Yeah. Friday the thirteenth. Oh my god. All right, let's yeah. we're gonna talk before then. We'll talk before then. We will. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Please like the show. Please share it. From the bottom of my heart, I am I am so blessed to be doing this every week and to bring you such great people that are in the entertainment industry, including my good friend, Jen Kay. Jen, and thank I you so much. 
I love you so much. And I, and I love I you too. All, all good things for you and everybody. Take care. I'll see you next week. Ciao. Bye.